Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to create lattice structures like this one. Lattices are used quite a lot in 3D printing and if you search the internet for 3D printed lattice you'll find many interesting structures and we're going to be using a plugin for Grasshopper in Rhino known as Intralattice. And um, if you're in one of my classes, I will provide the plugin for you. Uh, but you can always um, download it for free from Food for Rhino. And um, logging on foodforrhino.com, you just need to search for Intra Lattice and you'll find it. And there are also some interesting examples uh, on the plugin page. Once we have the plugin, we have to um, unzip the folder and within Grasshopper, we'll actually need to install this component. And if you haven't installed a component before, you can do it um, by going to File, Special Folders, and opening the Components folder. And then you will just drop, I should have this already in here. Yep, you'll see here I have the intralattice.gha file. Um, so once you download this uh, file from Food for Rhino, or um, if I've provided it to you, you'll just need to drop the intralattice.gha uh, file into this special folder. Then you'll need to close Rhino and restart Grasshopper. And once you've done that, you should see the Intralattice tab here in Grasshopper. Okay, so we'll be going over Intralattice and a little bit of uh, Grasshopper as well in this, um, in this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this and um, turn on the shaded view. And let's just jump right into Grasshopper and look at Intralattice. So um, it's a very simple plugin. There aren't too many, um, too many uh, components here which we, uh, which we need to go over. Um, starting from the left, you'll see that we have a preset cell. So we can um, pull that over, close this guy. And um, the preset cell is basically, um, you know, whatever your unit is in Grasshopper. Um, so filling one unit, we will have um, a series of potential cells that we can use. So this one is, uh, starts with, uh, sorry, grid, and then X, star, cross, tesseract, and more. And um, these are the cells that will aggregate in, um, in your geometry to create the lattice. Uh, so this comes out of the preset cell uh, component as uh, topology, and we need to apply this topology to something. Um, you can also make a custom cell. So if I pull down custom cell, and the input for this would be a series of lines. So um, if you wanted to make a custom cell, what we could do, what you could do is um, go to grid here, and just um, bake this out. And that's going to, oops, I need to let's see if I can bake that L. Okay, that gives us the lines, okay? And then you would just need to um, draw your lines within this box. And, um, and whatever you put within this box will then aggregate as your, as your tile. So if we have time, we might, um, we might look at that. Uh, and I'm just gonna delete that for now. Um, but you would then take your lines, put them into a lines component, and then bring this back in to the custom cell, and then you could output that topology. All right, so we need to aggregate our cell into something. So um, by default, we could use a, a basic box, and basic box is going to ask for our topology, and then um, you can see that it starts to aggregate something here. And as I change this topology, it is going to update the box. Um, we see here that we have a number of uh, parameters that are populated by default. So the unit size of the cell and X, Y, and Z, and then the number of cells in X, Y, and Z. If we wanna change these, we just need to make a slider. So if I, for example, type in, um, just uh, 
double left click here and type two. We're going to get a number slider and um, we could then plug this into these. And now we can change the number of cells that we have. And we could also, Control C, Control V, we could begin to um, make a slider that controls the scale independently. So now we have, um, we could have, let's say, 10, 8, 9. Uh, we could have not very many cells, like so a 3 by 3 um, grid here. But they could be much larger, or we could shrink this down and have many more cells. Uh, and of course, you could begin to control these things independently. Control C, Control V. I've just copied that, and I could plug this in here. And now I can begin to um, control the number of cells um, in the Y direction. And I could do the same for Z if I wanted to do that. So this is just basic grasshopper stuff, like how you um, how you control things. Now you'll see here, um, obviously we can't like have half a cell, so it's really nice to use an integer or whole number for this number. Um, but we could have, um, we don't need to use integers for this. And just a quick tip for grasshopper, if I use, instead of a whole number, uh, I create a decimal point number, 2.2, um, then it will give me a slider that uh, makes floating point decimal numbers. Um, we could also, if we want a, um, if we want even more control, we can put multiple decimal points here too. So I could now swap this slider out for um, these, this new one. And you'll see I'm just pulling over to the right, to the right. And now I can kind of stretch these and um, however I want independently to make my lattice. Okay. So um, this is how we um, make a basic lattice just using the, um, the components from uh, intro lattice. Let me make a slightly it's kind of interesting. And then let's go ahead and just like make this a little bit more manageable and maybe make my cell size bigger here, bigger and bigger and Z. So something like that. Okay, cool. And so if we wanted to get this into Rhino, um, it's giving us basically lines. So a really good uh, grasshopper trick is a uh, panel or I don't know if it's a trick, but just something that you'll use a lot. Panels are really helpful for seeing what information is coming out of a component. And we can see here that we have all of these curves. And um, if we want to get these curves into Rhino, like nothing exists in Rhino um, until I bake it there. So I need to right click this and hit bake. Okay, I could group these things if I want. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and group them. And now I have these lines in my model and I can continue changing this and it won't affect the things that I have here uh, that I've baked, right? So we know that we could, now these are just lines. So we could, um, we could do something interesting. Um, like, let's see what scale we're working at here. So let's say I wanted to pipe these lines. Uh, I'm going to just see what a good radius might be here. 0 0.402. So maybe like 0 0.5 would be a good radius or 0.4 maybe is better. So I could, I could type pipe, but actually that's not so great. I would want to use multi-pipe and multi-pipe is, um, is new in Rhino 7. It uses the subdivision surface topology. And I'm going to set this to 0.4 and caps. And I will say off for this one. And set uh, zero for smooth curves. I'll just hit zero and see what that gives us. Strut division, zero for smooth curves. Set that to zero. Oh, so it's just taking a minute here. Okay, cool. So now this has given us, let me hit tab here. And you, it's given us a subdivision surface. And um, when I hit the tab key, you can see that it goes smooth. 
and um, it's a closed sub D and this is something that we could actually 3D print if we wanted to. We would have to mesh it so we could get a mesh from this is by just typing mesh. Sorry, my mesh options popped up over here and let's just kind of give this a mid range and hit OK. And now this is giving us a mesh and we we could take this into a 3D printing software and 3D print this if we wanted. So that's pretty cool. So um, playing around with the piping um, is, uh, is helpful. And we can actually do that in Grasshopper rather than playing around with the TS pipe or the multi-pipe settings here. So if I double click this, I can type, well, so I'm basically now gonna show you a couple of ways that you can, um, you can work with this geometry. And I might just, uh, I won't need that because I can do it all within Rhino. And I might just even take our cell numbers down a little bit and make our cells bigger just so we can kind of see what's happening here like that. And yeah, maybe make a little bit three by three, something like that. Okay, cool. And um, okay, so a couple of ways that we can then uh, create geometry from this. So one is using the multi-pipe component within Grasshopper. So we can just throw in our struts here and it starts making something. And um, this is pretty, uh, it's a little bit hard to see within, let's see what I have on here. Like by default, Rhino or Grasshopper kind of likes you to be in the wireframe view. And so now we can see, um, see this. The Let's see how this works. But the IntraLattice plugin actually gives you a mesh preview component, which is pretty nice. So let's see if we plug that in here. OK, so the mesh preview here is only previewing the um, unsmoothed version of the um, of the subdivision surface. Oh, and I should I should point out that when you use multi-pipe and create a subdivision surface, you use the tab key to toggle between the smooth view and the um, and the polygon cage for the subdivision surface. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, we can also do a custom preview. This can be useful. Oh, double click, start typing custom. You'll get custom preview, and then double click and swatch. So you can get a color swatch. And this color swatch is something that you can change and you plug that into this and then plug this into this. And now we're gonna see the um, see something a little bit better in the Rhino view here. Okay, so, um, so this is pretty good. And what's nice about this is that we can actually change these things um, in real time. So the node size you'll see is by default 0.5. And this is what's going to set your um, set your uh, size, the overall size. So I'm going to type 0.55 so we have a little bit more control. And then I don't ever want to go down to zero because then that will give us an error. So I'm going to right click on the slider values and set my minimum value here to 0.1 and then commit this change. And that way when I slide down, I'll never go to zero, which would um, give us a, a void result. So now I'm plugging this in. And let's see how this, it's going to be, a, might be a little bit slow to slide in real time. So you can always change this up to, I don't know, like one, right? And now you see um, with a value of one, you can get um, a very thick thing. And with a value of, um, let's see, 0.3, you get a much skinnier thing. Uh, okay, so there's some other things that we can change here. And also, if I wanted to go above one, by setting this to 0.55, it sets my uh, val caps my value at one, but I could always change this, for example, to 1.5. And then I could slide this thing um, above. So if I just delete this thing, I could also, well, I don't want to do that. Um, I can also, let's see, pause it. I can disable it for a moment, slide this up, and then re-enable it. And that will also work as well. Okay, so let me just take this back to something like 0.4 and let's look at some of the other things that we can change here. So size points, um, so you could write, 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 uh, multiple radio, to, like we could actually go in and set points here and then set multiple radii, but that's pretty complicated, so we're not gonna do that. 
Um, end of offset. Um, this lattice is closed, so we don't have to worry about that. Everything, all of these lines touch. Um, but we could, well, we'll get into that in a minute. End offset, edge loop. No enter, and give a smoother shape. Set to one, set to zero. So we, this could be one and zero. So let's see if what happens if we, right now it's set to one. So let's panel equals zero. Let's see what happens if we set this to zero. Ah, okay. So now you can see we get a really smooth shape here. And if we go to panel equals one, it's gonna be less blobby, right? So now um, this is a less smoothed out result. So the end offset is going to um, control how this behaves. So we could set a slider of, I don't know, like 0.5, right? And then this is gonna allow us to kind of determine how this change happens. If I bring this up to one, we get an end, uh, that's where we were. And then if we bring this down to zero, Right, we get this smoother thing and then let's see what happens. It looks like it's either zero or um, something above zero. So it's either on or off. We we'll just check that. And so right now this is set to one. So we'll just make that explicit by pulling that in here. Okay, great. What else can we change with the TS pipe? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm sorry, it's not TS pipe, that's a uh, multi pipe. Strut size, um, the size of the struts between nodes. So less than one gets, gives tapering struts and oh, uh, older, over, blah, 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 over than, oh, greater than one gives bulging struts. So um, we could set this to 1.5 and then let's see what happens here if we pull up this into strut size. Okay, so you can see that we get this kind of cigar shape in here. So let's make this even bigger, like, uh, like I don't know, three. So we get these very, um, I don't know, like balloon dog chubby struts here. And then if we take this to less than five, we can probably get them tapering. So let's take it down to like 0.2, right? And then they get skinnier here um, when we change this. And by default, what was it by default? Uh, by default, it was one. And so that gives us straight struts. So we'll just make that explicit by saying 1.5 and then putting this at one. So now we know that we could get tapering or um, other uh, kind of effects here or um, tapering struts or bulging struts or just straight struts by changing that. Segment, um, edge loops, if set to zero. Um, so edge loops are basically going to change the topology. So if I set this to two, for example, we're going to get more segments in between. So I don't know why this is, doesn't seem to be changing it, but I feel like it should be. Segments for uh, along each strut. So we should be seeing more, are we seeing more? Hmm, I don't know why that's not, but I wonder if we then change the strut size to like two or something, if we see, huh. I'm surprised that we're not seeing that difference, but theoretically this should put more segments in here. Kink angle, um, smooth curves, but uh, when discretizing, okay. This I'm not sure how this is going to, um, change things, but it's set to 0.6. So let's just make that slider and see if we get any changes here. If we change the, like we take this down to zero, what does this give us? It's not making a big difference in this one. Let's just say to change this to 20. And this just doesn't seem to be changing a whole lot here. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Maybe there's some case in which that is going to be important. Cube fit, uh, fit a cube at each node. Okay, this is just has to do with the topology of it and caps. Um, so this is important if you have open lattices. Uh, right now, all of our segments connect, but um, maybe what we could do here is if we just take these struts and bake them out. And oops, grab all these lines 
pull these over. Um, let's just make a condition. I'll just delete some of these things here and uh, delete some of the things at the top. And now we're going to have open, a kind of open situation, some of these struts anyway. And let's grab these. And I'm going to make a line component here. Right, set multiple lines. OK. And that didn't work. So let's make a curve component. Grab these. Set multiple curves. OK, cool. And now I'm just going to swap this in here. All right, so now you can see here that we have open um, open tubes, but we can also give these caps. So let's make an integer slider of two, and let's go ahead and uh, change our max value to two. Can it change this? So now we can go between zero, one, and two. And so two, is going to give us flat caps. One will give us round caps, and then zero will give us no caps. Okay, so this is how we can um, this is how we can use the. Um, these are all of the settings for the multi pipe. Now um, the multi pipe is cool, but it and it gives incredibly clean results. So that's great. Um, so it's a great option to consider when um, making this stuff into our lattices into geometry. But it doesn't give us a lot of flexibility when it comes to the. Now there might be some tricks that um, to uh, using the different node sizes to give us a, a range of sizes for a lattice. But in general, it doesn't give us a. Um, let's change this up to something like twenty here. I'm going to make this taller. There we go. Cool. Um, it doesn't give us a lot of uh, flexibility when making a variable lattice size. Um, so intro lattice itself has some um, meshing options. So we're going to look at that. So by default, it, uh, we can do a homogeneous mesh. And so it's calling this homogen. We're going to pull our struts in here. And then we're going to use 0.4 for our radius. And it's not going to output a sub D mesh, but a um, it's going to give us a uh, triangulated mesh. So let's see what happens here. And let's pull this. Um, we can see, oops, let me go back to our tab custom preview. Oh, well, this is actually going to use now uh, work well with the mesh preview that um, Intro Lattice provides. So we're going to use that. OK, so now we can see that we have a homogeneous uh, triangulated mesh here. And um, all of the struts are the same size. And um, if we change the radius here, 0.75, we get it thicker. And if we make it smaller, then it becomes thinner. So this one's pretty straightforward. All right, that's cool. All right, um, OK, but there's also a heterogeneous mesh. And so heterogeneous custom, um, this one I think is struts, start radii, end radii. Um, I think let's just see what happens here. When we do this, so let's make the end start radii 0.3. The end radii will make something bigger. Let's see what this does. Struts. Oh, it doesn't like this. Why? Number of radii and the list. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've worked with this one before. It's not even really, I think, worth looking at, if I recall. Um, so let's just not worry about that one right now. Uh, let's go back to the mesh and do the heterogeneous gradient, because this is the one that's cool. All right, so we want the struts here. Uh, we're going to delete this mesh preview and make a new one. Sometimes it doesn't clear out the old stuff. So we're going to put this in here, OK? Um, must have some sort of information here in here now. So you can see here, like, um, 
0.5.2. So we're going to make our maximum maximum gradient. Um, like it, let's make it something bigger, like 2.5. And then we're gonna make our minimum something like um, 0.2. Okay. And we're not seeing any change yet because we actually have to supply a gradient. And this is where um, we can come up here and find a preset gradient in the utilities of the um, of Entrelattice. So the preset gradient, um, linear x, linear y, linear z. So um, we're having our biggest change in z. So that's going to be the obvious one to select here. So linear z. And then it's going to create, there we go. So basically, we're getting thicker as we go up. And we're getting thinner as we go down. If we change this one to something like 1.5, like that. Ah, okay, cool. So we're getting this um, nice change here as we um, as we go through. And um, so that is pretty cool. And um, there's some other gradients that we can play with here. So centered x. So centered x, smaller, um, seems to be smaller in the middle, thicker at the ends. Centered Y, so it's just changing where that happens. Centered Z, that's pretty cool. So the middle of it is thin, the ends of it are thick. Cylindrical, cylindrical X, cylindrical Y, let's sing. Ah, okay, so thinner in here, what about it with X? Thinner this way. And then cylindrical Z. So now thinner in the middle, thicker on the edges. And then we would just need to swap out these things if we wanted to reverse that, right? So we could make it thicker in the middle and thinner on the edges just by swapping the locations of the maximum and minimum, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and swap it back for clarity so that our smaller number is actually our uh, smaller number, our bigger number is our bigger number. Um, and then spherical, let's look and see what happens there. Spherical, um, uh, okay, so it's thinner in the middle here, right? So maybe let's switch these back so we can see that a little bit more easily. Like that. Okay, um, okay, right. So now let's take our minimum radius down. So this one, the radius wants to be lower because it's putting, imagine a sphere around this whole thing. And uh, so the extremities are actually, like if we did a, a bounding box, well, we can't, but uh, let's just go ahead and bake this thing out. Uh, okay. Now we have that mesh uh, bounding box. We, Area centroid, that's going to put a dot in the middle, hide that mesh, and let me just make a sphere here somewhere. There's right. So, if we think about, uh, let me show that bounding box again. Oops. And let me make a sphere. Let me find that point and Right, so basically we, our sphere is somehow capturing all of it, right? So our minimum radius is gonna be, um, so maximum radius, minimum radius, but um, whatever the like most extreme number is, it's gonna be way out here um, or close. You can see that it's thinner closer to the edge here, but like thicker over here. So that's um, because we're not as close to the edge. And so that um, minimum radius is really being set um, on the perimeter of the sphere. So, okay, so that's how that's working. So this is, but this is giving us pretty, um, pretty cool results. And these are meshes that we could then, um, we could work on further and, um, you know, take into substance and texture. 
Uh, let's see if what happens with our subd tools. We could uh, subdivide subd. Let's if we subdivide this thing. Mm. Okay, now it's um, it's given us more divisions, which will ultimately give us a uh, a smoother thing. Go back one. Oops. Although it doesn't look super smooth, but I'm gonna go forward one. Did we subdivide it? Okay, hard to tell a big difference there because it's a triangulated mesh, not a quadrangulated mesh, but we could try to retopologize this, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, okay, one other thing that we need to cover with Intralattice real quick is um, using custom shapes. So obviously everything that we've done here, I'm going to switch out of the, back into the shaded view. Um, we're just using this basic box and um, we could also use a cylinder. So that's pretty cool, um, but I'm not going to go over that. We can also confirm surface axis. This is pretty um, interesting because we could actually um, make a lattice between two surfaces as well. So if I make, uh, let's try that surface to surface. This I think is worth maybe looking into. Uh, let me just go ahead and delete that for now. Let's go ahead and um, conform surface to surface. Let's look at that one. So our topology is going to be this. Uh, let's, oh, this is where the intralattice mesh preview doesn't delete that. Okay, surface one, surface two. Uh, okay, see how I'm remembering how this works. Well, let's make a surface here um, like this. And we'll holding down an alt, copy that up. Um, let's rebuild this. Rebuild the surface and give it a few more points like, I don't know, four and four. Okay, and do the same with that one. We build four and four. Okay, cool. Uh, that way, if we hit the points here, then we can actually um, make a few changes to how this surface is set up. Like we could pull, push this one down a little bit like that. All right, so let's double click here and type SCRF for surface, and then we can get this uh, surface component. And I'll just double click that. So bottom surface, surface one will be my bottom surface here. So set one surface. And then I'm selecting this one, right clicking, set one surface. And now we're gonna make that surface one, that surface two. And you can see that it creates a lattice between these things. And as I squish these surfaces up, so I'll head F10, turn on the points here, um, grab a couple, and grab a couple of these things just to show it, right? It's creating this lattice between. So this is actually pretty, um, pretty awesome. And we can also then, um, using sliders, we can control the number of unit cells in U, V, and um, W. And morph, uh, morph to the space as curves. So that is, let's, this by default is set to false. Ah, so I think this means that they are going to be, um, they're going to be straight, but let's get a Boolean toggle. And a Boolean toggle just allows us to go between false and true. And so right now this is set to false. So we won't, shouldn't see a change. Now if I double click this to true, does this, I'm not seeing a change. False. It's a slight change. I do see something shifting. Uh, it's probably going to change the topology of the curves themselves. So, um, so that's something that we can kind of think about, but um, not don't need to worry too much about that. Now, okay, so struts, our struts are coming out here, and let's go ahead and I'm going to change this preset gradient to linear Z, and let's pull the struts back in here. So we should get our struts coming in. Hopefully we don't crash. All right, ooh, they're too big. Um, there's a grasshopper. Ooh, grasshopper went away. That's interesting. Where are you? Uh, grasshopper. Oh, there you are. Okay, cool. 
So obviously our struts here are way too big, so I'm going to take this down to 0.5, something like that, a more reasonable number. It's having a hard time crunching this. It's thinking. All right, let me uh, just pause the video while it's thinking. Oh, nope, came back. Okay, cool. And it's really uh, making me work to find Grasshopper. That's strange. Uh, let me pause this while I find Grasshopper. Okay, we're back, and uh, I, mean, I don't know what that was going on there. Um, we should then be able to use the mesh display here. Mesh preview, like that. Okay, so we have some um, some pretty interesting things here, and if I uh, bake this thing out, bake, cool. Now I have this cool mesh. And you can see that I've got this preset gradient going, so it's skinnier at the top and um, thicker at the bottom. So this is a pretty nice, um, pretty nice thing to use. All right, so that was conform, uh, conform surface, uh, surface to surface, conform surface to point. Uh, okay, conform the lattice between the surface and an axis, surface and a point. Um, you can try those if you want. I'm going to keep moving here. Let's delete this preview and delete this one and I'll delete these. And let's look at another option, which is you can use your own surfaces. And this is, uh, let's see, a uniform design space. So it generates a uniform lattice within uh, a design space. And that design space is simply um, geometry that you provide. So for example, I could pull my topo over here and we need a design space. And so that design space, let's just make something um, that intro lattice doesn't have, like a big sphere here. And uh, let's go ahead and um, this doesn't want, this is gonna be a surface. So let's try that surface. Right click, set one surface. And then we're gonna pull this into here. Let's see if this works, it's thinking. <laughs> Let me pause it while it's thinking. Okay, so it did create this lattice. I'm going to go ahead and hide this thing um, and also right click and turn off the preview. Uh, it was taking so long because, oh wow, there's a lot of struts here. Um, so the unit size of the cell. Uh, XX. Uh, so this is, we can only control the size of the cell here. So let me go ahead and disable this and let's make a bigger size and let's go ahead and plug these things in before we re-enable. Well, like that. Okay, cool. Right click, enable. This shouldn't take so long because, ah, yeah, much bigger now. Cool. So we have our sphere, right? And then um, as we, let's go back to uh, wireframe mode. And then as we like maybe make this bigger or change it, it's going to um, fill that. So we could even have two spheres. Let's see this, pulling this up, that's a wireframe, but there are two spheres here. Let's Boolean union these things. Okay, and so it breaks it, and that's because it's no longer a surface anymore, so I can get rid of that. And I need to use what's known as a B-rep. So this is what Grasshopper calls poly surfaces. And let me go grab that, right click, set one B-rep. Okay, hide, well, I don't need to hide that. I need to hide this preview. And now I can pull that into our design space. And now you can see, ah, cool, it is um, changing this. Now it's, um, it does use a construction plane to by default, it's this XY plane. Grasshopper does under the vector tab, give us some um, uh, options for changing that plane or uh, making new planes, um, rotating planes. So these are things that you could um, play around with, but just know that by default, like it's using this plane, but that you could rotate the plane. Okay, 
Um, tolerance strict. Uh, this is not something we need to worry about. Let's go ahead and just make this bigger a little bit. Uh, could go ahead and hide that. And then we could come back over to our, come back over here, pull this down into our struts here. And this should give us yeah, some results. And we have here, uh, we're still using our um, heterogeneous gradient or heterogeneous, yeah, mesh with this gradient. And if we make this rim minimum radius, let's say bigger. Well, let's make our, let's swap this back to, ba -ba -ba. so our max and our min are in the right places. And it's thinking for a moment, because that's what it likes to do. Grasshopper, come back. Let's disable this for a second. Disable. Let's go ahead and put our maximum here. And let's make this a bigger number, something that we're going to see. A change like that and then let's go ahead and use our uh, go back to interlattice go to our <coughs> excuse me uh, mesh preview turn that on plug that in here and then let's go ahead and re-enable that and then okay cool yeah now now we see some interesting results um, it can kind of um, give corrupt results, like kind of bug out a little bit here. So sometimes if you just change, tweak this a little bit, make, give it a different, slightly different radius, that's not helping too much. Or the other thing you could do is if you're happy with the struts, you can might just delete those. Um, you could, you know, output these as lines and bring it back, these things back in as curves. So sometimes it doesn't like it. I don't think we might do, yeah, yeah. Sometimes even just moving this thing around in space, although we'd have to get our struts for that. So let's just go ahead and bake that, see if we can solve this problem real quick. We'll bake these lines. So we have all these lines. Uh, let's just move it over a little bit. And um, let's create curves. Set multiple curves. And then I actually want to make a line component like that. Pull these in just to make sure that it's understood by interlattice. Yeah, and isn't that interesting? Because now it's fine. So um, I don't know why just changing it to um, baking the output and bringing this in. And now we don't have any uh, corrupt things over here. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll show you one last thing and then we'll, um, we'll call it a day for this tutorial. Uh, let me, do I wanna, yeah, we can save this stuff, this is fine. I like this thing, it's pretty cool. Like a uh, latticey peanut. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, I guess I need to delete that. Uh, we just have lines over here. So I'm just gonna group those, hide them. Yeah, let's delete that. Okay, so there's one other thing that we can do here. So I have a volume that I made in Maya, in, Bry in Bifrost. Um, so this is a crazy mesh, crazy mesh um, thing. And so I just want to show you that you can, in addition to B reps, we can also use double click mesh. So here's our mesh parameter. We can plug this thing in here right click set one mesh hide this thing uh, let's uh, turn off the preview pull this in for a design space now oh we only have like one thing here it's because now this thing is small our cell size is kind of big so we pull this down okay you can see that we have uh, so we go to zero we don't get that right so maybe we actually want to make our cell size 1.2 that will give us more uh, in between steps because we would Right now we're just rolling with integers in this one. This one is going two, three, four, five, six, and now we're kind of going in between here, so we can kind of tweak that. Um, so then this is obviously the shape is complex, so we're, we're getting some islands of things. Unless we go to really small size, Ooh, really small size, which it doesn't like. So let me pause that. Hopefully it doesn't crash. It did not crash. That's great. Um, so we take this down to another point five. See if we can. Now we are getting connection here between these things, but we have like a massive number of stretch. So I'm just gonna bring this up to like 1.2, something like that. Um, and then of course we can go back and change our cell size here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into here. Let's get our mesh preview, this little hamburger mesh preview. Pull this over, 
Cool. Pull this in. Cool. It's going to take a minute. Might be too big because we've already had that much larger thing going before. So let me pause this. Okay, so back. And yeah, I had this thing is the mesh, the input mesh is really small um, compared to what we were doing before. So I had to make really small numbers to get this work. But now you can see that I am getting this gradient. Um, I had a very small number here in order to get these struts. And then as we go up, they go, uh, they go taller. And with this whole assembly, we can still kind of um, click here and change this. It's going to take a minute for it to update. Um, but this whole assembly we can swap out for a different mesh, or I'm sorry, a different lattice type. And yep, now it changes, and we get a different result. Now we are getting these kind of bug out moments here, so um, this is where we might want to go ahead and like uh, grab our lines and throw them back into the meshing component. Um, and there's also then the, the TS pipe component that we could play around with. But if we want a gradient, then we can um, we can use this. So this is uh, another thing that we can, um, sorry, grasshopper. Come on, grasshopper, come back. Let's try it one more time. A third time's the charm, right? Um, so we have a lot of options here. We can use the, uh, we can use interlattices measure. We can use um, we can use multi pipe, and um, we can also, if we're not getting good uh, results from this, we can bake these struts. We can um, grab the lines, move them over, throw them into a curve component, throw that into a line component. This step might not be necessary, but it's just going to make sure that we get better results. Throw that into here and then grab these curves. And grab all the curves. Right click, set multiple curves. And then maybe that will give us some better results. In this case, the results seem to be about the same, but we could uh, we could delete some of the lines, or we could just play around with the numbers down here, and maybe we get uh, better results. So, but anyway, I hope you found this useful and uh, make some interesting things in Rhino and Grasshopper using Intralattice. Thanks.